Hey guys, hope you guys are all okay. Today we're going to take some really cheap 433 MHz transmitters and receivers and create a rolling code within them that's, well I believe it can't be hacked. And in, that's the challenge for today my friends, is can you put these together and in a real life test hack your way past this rolling key? Because for me it's unpredictable, you can't work out what it's going to be okay you can brute force and just keep sending random keys to this to this thing but i can't i can't brute force it i've not been able to brute force it so that's the challenge for today so we're going to take some of these really cheap transmitters and receiver modules here they are from quite cheap and normally these are extremely easy to record and play back so you definitely wouldn't use these as they are for anything that you class clusters really secure but we're going to add a little bit of a microcontroller on the front end we're going to create a rolling code that's completely unpredictable and has some pretty fancy features and that's the challenge guys it's open source i'm going to tell you exactly how it works i'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it and then i'm going to ask you to go to the github page set it up and see if you can crack it so let's have a look what we've got on our breadboard we've got two little nanos this is the transmitter circuit and this is the button on the transmitter and this is the receiver circuit and the receiving nano now at this stage i need to explain how these chips work because they're not a serial rx tx what they are is they they use a set of buttons like these here and essentially when you transmit you either press button one two three or four and it transmits across to the receiver which button's being pressed and makes these pins go high so these these go to ground so you ground k1 here and then other than, they're not in a quite a logical order but you know you'd expect d1 to go high but it's not it, it's not quite like that the pin outputs are like this so there's no logical order when tx pin k1 as it is goes uh, goes to ground then rx d2 goes positive and what we're using with a, a combination we're using sort of a, a binary output so if one two and three are pressed then you get and you convert that to binary then you get a number anywhere between one and 15 and that is how we're using the the method of sending a rolling key over in a number of different in, in, in a number of different pulses over the tx and also just to be clear you have to when you when you've got the rx you've got a little button on the rx here for binding so you have to bind the tx to the rx and you've got three 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 possibilities here but we want the moment momentary mode which is one press of that button and then that will allow us to to, to to use this software so here we have our code and i'll show you where to get this from my github page here are all the wiring instructions for the rx and tx resistors are only required if you want to generate a new set of numbers which is here random numbers and it's just to set the seed if we look to pressing the button on the tx we'll see that we get a little bit of a preamble and then it sends us a code and we see that the successful code was interpreted and this successful code was sent which is this first block of seven here no problem with that so if you press it again and bear in mind that we have to consider interference because there will certainly be some interference in the 433 megahertz range so we have to ensure that we check further down the pattern just a little way just in case we press the transmit button and the signal isn't received so the transmitter will go on to the next rolling code but the rx doesn't know the button's been pressed so it has to look a little bit in, in front of itself let's try it again now th there's a stroke of look we've got a little bit of interference so i'm going to press it again as you see the, the next time i press it it didn't find the code because it's all out of sync now i'm going to be honest i need to find a better way of handling that so it stops 
checking for the for the next data bit, if you like. That's never going to arrive because of interference. But what we should find is that if we get a successful signal like that, then what's actually happened is it's realized that it's missed, missed a section, a code. <coughs> but it's found the code is the next one. <coughs> so it's accepted it. And if we go again, Nah, didn't didn't I, I, I did activate the the auto scroll, but it's found the next one. We're now at position twenty eight. Try again. Okay, we're now at position thirty five forty. So the next next code would be at position forty two. And essentially, this keeps going around. There's one thousand four hundred numbers here. Now you might think, okay, <coughs> that's that's fine, Kev. That's brilliant. But supposing I just keep sending the same number over and over again and then eventually I might be successful and if I'd left it for an hour it didn't find one I could alter the numbers and try again or because it rolls around these numbers I could just try and keep sending that sequence you know I could record and capture 14 5 7 14 8 11 and 2 and I could just continually keep sending that what we've thought about that here is that it, it what it does is it defines it checks down here read the rolling code check that the rolling code has not been repeated and what that does is it means that it will stay on if you keep sending the same code it will never advance along the code list it will just keep saying no I'm looking for these numbers and you're sending the same code over and over again so it'll just keep saying no I'm looking for these numbers if you send a different number and it fails it will just move on to the next group for the next time. So in other words, if you're sending a set of seven random numbers, then you are checking against a set of seven random numbers, and then you'll change for your seven random numbers, and these seven random numbers will change also, meaning that you're forever trying to hit a moving target. And I've tried to brute force this, and I can't get through. So that's why I set the challenge. Can you break into the system in a real life test? Could you make this garbage door open? Now, got to admit, there are some downfalls. And that is, if a criminal is sending seven random codes and they keep changing that code, then the RX will keep moving on. And after a very short period of time of doing that, then the, the TX and RX will become out of sync. And because I don't want to look too far along the list, because that creates a vulnerability in itself, then you may have to either reset, or well, actually reset both the RX and TX to get them back in sync again. Now, there's some ways around that, but every time you look at that and, and put in the comments, if you can think of a way of doing this, but if you set maybe a second fob that is uh, got a dedicated key that says override everything, open the door, then then you leave, you you leave a way in because it means that if the criminal just keeps cycling through a brute force attack changing the numbers as it goes along and keeps sending it it will eventually find the second door key that's got a particular code and it will open the door and let them in so in my in my scenario i shan't build that any sort of back door in because i can get in from the other key i can i can, I can go around the back if you like and open the door manually and reset Re re reset all the codes and, and, and go again. I prefer the option, if I'm honest, where I know that it's been tried to be brute force attacked and it's not let them in. Although I still can't get in, there's no back door, there's no way they're going to actually break the code and get the door to open, even if it leaves me also locked out and I have to go r r round the back to get in. So the challenge is set. Let me show you where the GitHub page is. Okay, so this is the project. I'll leave a link in the comments below so you can get to it. You've, it's just a standard Arduino sketch. You can download it in the normal way with the zip file. Or you've got, there's a released version here if you want to get the hex. Okay, taking a look at how we would install these. So you would, first of all, you'd set up your nanos and you'd make all your connections like this. and I would suggest you add two resistors. Any resistors will do. So if we just take a closer look at that, 
I've just got those two resistors in there. I'm using a 100K and it looks like a 10K. I suggest you don't use those. Just use any random resistors, whatever you've got, doesn't matter. It's perfectly fine. Just connect them up in that sort of pattern where you've got one from negative to A0 and one from positive to A0. This just creates a voltage divider so we can generate a random seed. And, and that's because if you ask a nano to create a list of random numbers, you'll get the same numbers every time. Whereas if we use a voltage dividing circuit to create a different voltage for all, all of us, then when you ask it for a set of random numbers, you'll get a truly set different set of random numbers. Then once we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to just uncomment random numbers. And as long as you've got a nano connected to this board here, we can upload that here onto a nano. And when it's finished uploading, it will present you with a list of new random numbers, depending on what those resistors are. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take those and you're going to paste them in here. like this and now I've got a completely new set of random numbers now I have to flash both the TX and the RX so we're going to comment this 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 one back out and we're going to change the mode first of all for the TX that will ensure that the TX part of the program is now valid sorry that bit there TX is all all valid I'm going to move the USB cable from the RX to the TX circuit and I'm going to select compile and flash and that's been uploaded and then I'm going to pull the USB lead out of the TX and put it into the RX and I'm going to scroll to the top and make sure that I've got the mode commented so you commented out to flash the rx uncomment to flash the tx and now you notice that the tx program is now not going to be compiled but the rx program will so once that's in there we can flash and once it's complete now the tx and the rx understand the list of numbers it's going to use and if i press it And it would be great if we didn't get any interference. So I'm going to press it again. And again, because we have to handle and resync. And then it passes. The rolling checks have now passed. Oh, auto scroll. Rolling code have passed. Press it again. <laughs> Got some interference, as I can see, as it slows down. Press it again. And again to make it resync and it resyncs. Notice again, as we pointed out before, it tries the first code in the sequence, realizes that actually it must have been an issue, so it tries the next one in the sequence, captures it. And just to be clear for, for those budding hackers, we will only check where's the code, we will only check consecutive, we'll only go up as, as far as 10 consecutive codes if it doesn't find it in the 10 then it just goes back to where it was and it assumes somebody's trying to hack so guys i hope you find that useful please let me know in the comments raise an issue if you do manage to hack it tell me how you've done it see if we can code code that out to stop it happening i'm probably gonna add a little bit more to it i want to add the buttons so that i can detect whether you know button one two or three or four is being pressed at the moment it's simply an, an on off it you know if it receives a signal it'll go on if it if it, if it, if it doesn't if it receives the next signal it, it go back off etc so that that needs to be added in but first of all i need to know how security how, how security is so that's the challenge see if you can hack it let me know if it's secure i'll keep continue with the development and make it so it's back to the usual one two three four buttons as always, I've forgotten to say in the middle of the video, please like and subscribe if this sort of stuff interests you. Hit the notification bell. I have got something 
That's going to help me with that. And you may have seen a little sneaky snippet when I showed this little bit here, Polish Paul VR sign. Because that's a sign I made for my son-in-law, who also runs a YouTube channel called, surprisingly enough, Polish Paul VR. And if I've done this right, I put him up there in that corner so you can see the awesomeness of this sign of what it looks like on the screen. And it's based on the WS2812 LEDs. There's a 144 per meter. We've got seven meters in total, put into 14 lines. And we're going to be doing that on, on, on this channel too. So don't forget, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get to see a new sign being built for my channel.